Hello and welcome to the back of my joiner. This is my Rikon 210H. Uh, this is their heel to head jointer planer machine. And I've had this thing uh, for about well, three years I'd say. And so over the last uh, couple of boards that I've ran through the planer, the in-feed rollers have not been working well. Uh, periodically, maybe once every two or three seconds, uh, there's a loud pop and the board will stop be, um, being pulled through the planer. They have to you know, help it through from the back with a second piece of stock. So that is not a good thing to have happen with a, a joiner planer. Um, so I'm back here with the back panels off, trying to see what the heck's wrong with this thing. And the first thing I've noticed back here is that um, the chain for the infeed rollers is really loose. Um, but before we get into it, let me just give you guys a little bit of context with how these joiner planers work. So this pulley is on the main motor and it's attached permanently up to the cutter head. And now this pole over here drives the infeed rollers. So it's, it's in turn um, hooked on to a reducing gear back here, this white plastic guy. And this chain here uh, starts at the bottom and loops its way around the uh, infeed roller as well as the outfeed roller goes around there. And then to engage it, you have this magical lever on a spring which moves this pulley down, engaging this little green belt. So in normal joiner mode, um, the motor does its thing and this bolt just kind of flops around in place and doesn't get, um, doesn't get driven. So back to the chain. Uh, the chain is, it just feels really loose. Um, I've never really, I've never been in here before, I've never had this back panel off. So I don't know what the chain felt like when this thing was new, but for a person who bikes a lot and has uh, worked on farm equipment in the past, that seems really loose. And uh, sure enough, when I fired this thing up, um, there's a horrendous amount of, of like non-contact between the chain and the pulley teeth up here. So I'm going to fire this thing up to show you. So right now we're in joiner mode. This is not engaged. We're going to reach around. Keep your eye on the chain up there. My mission is to adjust this little idler here to hopefully take up the slack in the chain. And while I'm at it, I'm going to see if I can't adjust the tension on this main V-belt here via the motor. Um, this V-belt has a lot of flutter in it, and if there's any play left in the motor mounting slots, I can maybe take that out. So I'm going to get back to you in a few minutes to see how we did. So far, so good. The idler was easy to adjust. I just had to loosen up this 13 millimeter nut and move the assembly to the left to take up the slack. Uh, sadly, the motor was already at the bottom of its slot mounts, so I couldn't add any more tension to this V-belt here. Um, and I fired this thing up and uh, the flutter is still there. So I guess, unless I choose to replace this belt with a link belt, I'm kind of stuck with it. So let's fire it up and see what it looks like. Keep your eye on the chain right there. Planers off. Oops. So it looked pretty good. Um, I am going to ship this thing up to plane and run a piece of wood through just to make sure that the in feed performance is where it's supposed to be.
work really well. Um, that's actually the best infield performance that player has had in a long time. Uh, for like two years now, whenever I feed a board in, the when it touches the metal infeed roller, the first one, it would make sort of a rump noise as it like caught the board and started pulling it in. And I always thought that was just the um, the metal ribbings on the infeed roller grabbing the board, but I don't know. It didn't make that sound this time. So maybe that was the chain slipping. Jeez, <laughs> I've been putting up with that for a long, long time. So um, yeah, so if you have uh, this Rikon joiner or a similar model like the, the Jet uh, joiner planer, uh, check out that chain in back. Um, if you look at the design of that either pulley, um, if you go back into the video, you'll notice that it is on the tension side of the chain. And so consequently, that either either pulley is going to have a tremendous amount of sideways force on it, um, pushing it towards the loose position. Uh, normally, an idler pulley is on the uh, non-tension side of the chain, so it doesn't have those same forces exerted on it. So, kind of a bad design, but it's something you can at least um, anticipate and maybe check once or twice a year. Well, thanks for watching, guys. I hope this helped you.